All right, so as we can see here on the right side of the screen, I have the measurements that I have taken from the previous video. And I have on the left hand side, I have a new Excel sheet. And just apologies, last video this was supposed to be F02, so I'm going to make it F02, which is the green one. And how do we start? Usually I write here item and here sub item and here numbers, then here L or area and here B or one. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. Then here I'll say D or H, then here quantity. Just before we start, let's freeze this, freeze pans, freeze. So I'm freezing this part and I can start with the foundations. Here in the item, I'll put the foundations. And let's do just some quick formatting. So here under the item foundations, I have F1, F2 and F3. So F1, 2 and 3. Then the numbers, I'll take them from here, 6, 4 and 1. So 6, 4 and 1. Then the next item will be the neck columns. So I have the numbers here. So I'll come here and say neck columns. And then I have C01. Again, two and three and one, four, six. Next item for me is the ground beams. So ground beams, GB01 and two and three. And for the ground beams, I'll just mark the number as one. Why? Because I have measured the full length here. So under the length, I'll put 17 for GB1, 3.6 and 3.3. So this is what I have here, 17 and 3.6 and 3.3. The next item will be slab on grade. So slab on grade. And again, the number will be one because I have measured, let's call this SOG. The number will be one because I have measured the area here, the total area from Creo. So I have 11.46. And actually here I say L into B, like length into breadth or area into one. So this is area, I'll put one here and I'll make it in yellow so that I can understand that this is area into one slab on grade done. Next item will be the columns. So here I'll put the columns and the same numbers. Then drop beams. I have DB01 up to DB02 and one one and I can take the length from here 16.99 3.3 Next, we have the slabs, so slab. Again, the number is one, and I can take the area here, 12.18 into one, similar to what we have done for the slab on grade. Now, there are some missing information that I will get from somewhere else, which is the sections. So I'll open the sections here like this. So as you can see, I have here the foundations. These are the dimensions. So I'll go to the foundations, 0.7 into 0.7 into one. Then here, 0.8 into 0.8 into 1. And here, 0.9 into 0.9 into 1. And the quantity will be this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this. So just multiplying the four numbers, this is the volume. And I can copy the formula and take an auto sum here. And I'll make this in red color and bold. And we can have some line here that says that this is the submission. So I have something that looks like that. Now for the neck columns here, we can come to the columns and these are the dimensions of the columns. 0.2 into 0.7, 0.2 into 0.6, 0.2 into 0.5. And the height will be, let's say 50 centimeters or 0.5 because this will depend on the foundation level. So this is the submission, small quantity. Then going to the ground beams, here sections 0.2 into 0.7, 0.2 into 0.6, and 0.2 into 0.6. And I'll copy this, paste it here. For the slab on grid, the thickness is 0.1, as we saw in the last video. So I'll just take multiplying here, and this is the submission. Then for the columns, I can copy all of this here. I'll just change the height. The height, let's say, for example, three meters. Then for the drop beams, we have here the section 0.2 into 0.7 and 0.2 into 0.7. Their reinforcement is different, but their concrete dimensions are similar. 
Okay, for the slab, we have a thickness of 0.22 and I can copy this. So what I am having here is the concrete quantities of the foundation, neck column, ground beam, slab on grade, columns, drop beams and slabs. This is the first part. Now I have the first thing, which is the concrete volume. Now the second part, which can be established or calculated from these numbers is the formwork. And actually, if you want, you can split the formwork into horizontal and vertical. So I can say here, let's say horizontal form and vertical form. I am calculating the formwork now. So for the foundations, I don't have any horizontal formwork, so I'll just have it as zero. Again, let's make all the page as numbers. Okay. For the vertical formwork, I'll just make a formula here that says two into open a bracket L plus B, close the bracket. So this is the periphery of the foundation. If I multiply this by the depth, it gives me the wall area. If I multiply all of this by the number, I get the quantity of the formwork and I can use like that. So this is how I am calculating the neck column or the, sorry, the foundations formwork. I am getting the periphery, which is two into L plus B. This will be multiplied by the depth to get the wall area for one footing or one foundation, then multiplied by the number to get all of them. Now for the neck columns, exact same thing because zero horizontal form work and the vertical also will be the periphery multiplied by the depth. So the periphery will be taken from here, L and B, and this is the height. So it's the exact same formula. When we go to the ground beams, actually we have vertical form work equal to number multiplied by length, multiplied by depth, multiplied by two. So it should be here and this will be zero because I'm assuming that under the ground beams, there will be a PCC. So I'll do like that and let's make this smaller. Okay, for the slab on grade, we don't have any horizontal form work or vertical form work. For the columns, I can copy this one and put it here. And for the drop beams, I can copy the vertical because it will be same, which is equal to the number into the length, into the depth, into two sides. But here I have horizontal actually, which is equal to the number multiplied by the length, multiplied by the width of the beam. So this is the bottom part of the beam because this is a suspended beam or drop beam. So I can copy this one here as well. And for the slabs, we can say that the horizontal formwork will be equal to the area of the slab, which is the number multiplied by the area multiplied by one. Actually, we have a beam around the slab. So the vertical formwork on the sides is calculated with the drop beams. So I don't have any vertical formwork here for the slabs. And I can take some submission, as you can see. similar to this one. So what I have done now, I have the concrete quantities for all concrete elements and I have the formwork horizontal and vertical quantities also for all the elements. And now the remaining part will be only to calculate the steel reinforcement and to do that I'll use a template, a cost estimation template that I usually use, which is called AA Cost Estimation Pro. And obviously AA refers to Ahmad Adel and this is me. So if we are meeting for the first time, you know me now and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. So AA Cost Estimation Pro template is a template that looks like that. It has so many tabs a BOQ tab here and a rate calculation tab and a material list, manpower, steel and form calculations sheet. And this is actually the sheet that I need only right now from this template. By the way, you can find the link to this template in the description down below, but I'll be explaining this template in more details and how do I use it from the start in another video actually because here all I need from this template is only this sheet only because it will help me calculate the steel reinforcement quickly. So all I have to do is to copy this and I'll go to my file and I'll just paste it here. So I have 
a template that will help me calculate the steel reinforcement quickly. And for example here, how to use it, I have the isolated footing. So all I have to do, I'll delete this because these are old calculations that I don't need right now. So just the type, I'll say equal to, and I'll go here and foundation F1, I'll select it and enter. Then I'll mark this part and I'll just paste formula. So I got my numbers, my L and B and D. I got them from this sheet which we created now. Now all I have to do here is to put my steel details to get the weight of the steel inside these footings. And to do this, I have to go again to the sections. So from the sections, as you can see, for F1, let's make it like this. So for F1, I have 5T12. For the bottom reinforcement, 5T12 in both directions. So 512, 512. And for the top, I have 510. So here, 510. And here as well, 510. So as you can see, what I am getting here, this 200, 44 kilograms is the quantity of the steel inside all of my footings inside these six footings type F1 So I'll do the same for F2 514 514 and here 510 as well So I'll just copy this and paste it as a value here for the third type we have 614 and 614 and 610 610 so what happened here, as you can see, I am getting the steel quantities for all these. So the volume is 6.3, similar to what we have got here, 6.3 concrete volume. And we have a steel reinforcement of 512 kg. Okay, so this is what I am getting here. So what I can do, I can make another column here. And this column, I'll call it steel. And I can say equal to. So the steel, the full steel quantity will be equal to for F1 will be equal to this. And I'll use the same formula here. And when I take a submission, this will be the steel quantity. Of course, here the formula that calculates the steel is a very complicated formula, as you can see. But in short, to calculate the steel quantity, you need what is the total length of steel inside the element that you are calculating the steel for. Once you have the length, you multiply this length by the weight per linear meter of this diameter. This is how you calculate the steel in general. And actually this complicated formula that you can see here, I have made it previously and simply this formula is going here to the dimensions and it is reading what is the length of the foundation and what is the depth. So it is calculating the length of this U and you are giving the numbers, how many numbers are there and the number of footings is there and the steel diameter is there. So simply what this formula is doing, it's taking the length and then from the diameter, it's calculating the weight per linear meter and then multiplying that by the length to give you the total quantity as we can see here. But because creating a formula like this, it's not a rocket science, it's easy, but it takes time. So that's why we prepared this template once and we keep using it again and again and we try to improve it with time. So back to this, let's calculate now the neck columns. So for the neck columns, I have another sheet here, neck columns. So I'll just delete this and I'll delete the steel details, the old ones, because I had some old calculations. So I'll just say equal to the type will be equal to this neck column here. And similar to what I have done, I'll just paste formula. So I have my neck columns, the dimensions of my neck columns. All I have to do now is to just fill the steel reinforcement detail. So I have 10 by 6 vertical reinforcement. So here main reinforcement or vertical reinforcement. 10, diameter is 16. Here 8, 16. And here 6, 16. This here, this column inside the footing because these vertical steel bars, they will be extended inside the footing. So for me, the footing depth is one meter. So let's assume here that these bars will be extended by, let's say 0.5 or something inside the foundations. And actually, this you can find usually in the general details in the structural drawings. You will find such steel details. And for the stirrups here, we have seven diameter 10, 
seven ten for all of them. So I am getting the steel quantity here, as you can see. This is my steel, and of course, this is something that is called the steel ratio and form work ratio. I'll be explaining these two things in the next video, but. As we can see, the steel reinforcement is very heavy in, in the neck columns because of this extension here. So all I have to do is to go here and say equal to, go to this template and say equal to this steel reinforcement here. So this is the steel for the neck columns. Now for the ground beams, again I'll delete all these old information and equal to ground beams, then these are the dimensions of the beam. And for the ground beams, the reinforcement, the bottom reinforcement is 314, so 314. And the top is 214. And for the side bars, we have 212. So here I'll put 212. And for the stirrups, 710. So 7 and 10. So I am getting the steel quantity, as you can see here. For what? For GB01. Now let's go for GB02, again 314 and 214, same, 212, same, just the only difference, it's similar, but the only difference is in the stirrups, so I'll just paste this as a value, and here instead of 7T10, I'll put 5T10, and here 314, 314, 212 and 510, 212 and 510, so similar to this one, and again, I am getting my steel quantities here for these three beams so i'll just go to this one and here for the ground beams i'll say equal to this then copy the same formula okay for the slab on grade we can do the same thing here we'll just locate the slab on grade here is the slab on grade just remove this and remove this so the dimensions for the slab on grade here starting from sorry paste formula so these are the dimensions for the slab on grade and for the reinforcement i don't have any top reinforcement i have only bottom reinforcement which is five diameter 10 and five diameter 10. so the steel reinforcement of the slab on grade is very light as you can see so i'll just say equal to this value which is 70 here and I'll take the same submission that I used before. Now for the columns, we'll use the same. Actually, this is where you should like the video, by the way, because what you are seeing now is you are seeing me calculating the steel reinforcement for this project that we have studied and still studying together. So back to the columns, I'll say equal to C1, and I'll take the concrete dimensions here, like this, paste formula, and Main reinforcement, actually I can copy them quickly from here. This is the main reinforcement for the neck columns. It is the same reinforcement for the columns. So I'll just paste them as a value. And I'll go also and copy the stirrups. So for the columns, here are the steel quantities. So I'll say equal to this. And then just copy the formula and take this submission. So again, just to make sure that you are following up with me, we have the concrete volume here and we have the form work in a square meter here and I am calculating the steel quantity in kg right now. And actually because as you can see, it takes long time to calculate. So that's why I choose a small project. But the reason behind choosing a small project is to show you the full concept. I want to show you everything, how it is done, how do we do the quantity takeoff, and how can we calculate the form work, and how can we calculate the steel, all of that. So now, drop beams. So I'll go again here, drop beams. I'll delete my old calculations. By the way, if you go to the description and download this template, you will find these calculations there. So whatever green, you have to delete it before you start using the template. Type equal to db01 and we'll paste the dimensions. And from here, we can get the reinforcement detail, drop beams schedule. So we have bottom 316, and here 416, and top 214, and here top 214, and the sidebars 212 for both, and stirrups 710 for both. So I'll copy this part, and I'll have it also for the 
second beam. So as we can see, we have the steel quantity here. So all I have to do equal to this steel quantity. Last part is the slab. So I locate the slabs here. These are the slabs equal to this. And I'll get the dimensions. Okay. And for the reinforcement, I have to go back to Creo actually to see the reinforcement. So the reinforcement here is 512 top and bottom. 512, 512, 512, and 512. Why four of them? We have bottom reinforcement. We have short direction, long direction, and for the top, short direction, long direction, and so on. So I am getting the steel quantity here as well, 216. So I'll say equal to 216. So I have the quantities of concrete volume and we have the quantities of the horizontal and vertical formwork and we have the quantities of steel reinforcement. So cubic meters for the concrete, square meters for the formwork and kilograms for steel. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to put these quantities into a BOQ to become ready to do actually the cost estimation. So all of this time, I was just doing the quantity takeoff for concrete and the steel and the formwork in order to be able to do the cost estimation. We will do the BOQ in the next video and you will find it here next to me once it is released. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.